Countdown done and we're live. We are live and you just got home from our first Bolt on University of the Year. Yes, Denver. Hi Denver, how you folks doing out there? Our first Bolt on University went really, really well, Shana. Uh, we had over 40 people. Okay. And the beauty of the thing is that they've been using the Bolt on software for a good while. Now they know how much more they can get out of it. Mm -hmm. And they're all excited. And any of you folks paying attention, don't freak out. Remember, do the easy stuff first. Yeah. And the rest of you, if you have the software, you might want to look into the next months because it's Orlando. It's going to be a lot warmer. <laughs> you know what? It's so funny because being on social media, we hear from all of our customers, hey, when you come to our area, where are you mm -hmm. coming here? So we are doing our best to make it to all of the most convenient places for people to get in and out of. Um, so if you have a place that you really want us to come, make sure you keep letting us know. The more feedback we get, the better we're able to make a yes. decision on where we go next. Yeah, man, just let us know how many you got and where to meet you, and we'll see if we can make that happen. Mm -hmm. Now, JB, I can only imagine that start of the year, first bolt-on of the year, people were hungry and motivated. They want to do things for their business. Well, they're always motivated because there's just so much. Mm -hmm. And even the little things, because that's, bolt-on's not only about software, mm -hmm. bolt-on's about best practices. Mm -hmm. It's about how to do little adjustments to your shop that the software is going to help with, but yet, if you make some adjustments, it's going to make a big difference in how your shop runs. Sure, sure. So um, people take that, and they're really excited about being there. And that's the thing. There, People are always really excited to be there. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it might be a little hard because, you know, they're not used to sitting still. Mm -hmm. So you start getting the noggin dies once in a while. But we kept most of, kept them all awake, basically. Good. <laughs> I love it. Well, yeah, so hopefully you'll meet us down in much sunnier, much warmer Orlando. Orlando. <laughs> yeah, we have a lot of big things coming up, but you know, one of the things that we started talking about, it was two weeks ago since you were away for Bolton mm -hmm. University last week. One of the things we started talking about was how to increase profit margin at your shop. It's always the bottom line. Always the bottom line. You know, it's great to really be able to grow your shop and numbers are everything, but a lot of times, you know, they might be doing a lot more work, a lot more work, but it's not necessarily showing in that mm -hmm. profit growth. One of the first things we talked about two weeks ago was how scheduling will really help with this. And as you may remember, if you were part of that, and if not, you can go back and look at it. But here's the thing that we're trying to tell you here is that um, you have more control over, sorry, you stinking phones. <laughs> um, you have more control over your labor than anything else. Sure. And the scheduling. Not to talk about what we're doing with the labor because as I said you got full control when it comes to parts parts people and all those other places set those prices and those margin but in your shop you are in control with the labor mm -hmm. and by tweaking that you can definitely make better profits and I think there's some kind of a um, statistic out sure. there yeah so one of the statistics that we came across is when it comes to parts um, you know you're looking at a 20 to 28 percent profit margin on a good day, right? You know, that can change with different things, mm -hmm. with promotions, with sales that you're doing to drive customers in. But you typically see a 50 to 65% profit margin when it comes to your labor. Yes, especially if you play everything correctly. Mm -hmm. I mean, you have to look at your techs, how much you're paying them, because that's the that's base. Right. You have to look at how many hours you can do. As a matter of fact, when it goes back to scheduling, are you scheduling out your day hour-wise and making sure that you're at utilizing everything as possible with that little bit of space for the walk-ins mm -hmm. and then also charging customers properly and here's the thing are you undercharging customers mm -hmm. so that that's a really big topic for a lot of you to discuss now that whatever area you're, you are in that also determines how much you can charge mm -hmm. but here's the thing you folks perform a service that not everybody can do and you should charge people rightly for that mm -hmm. So don't be afraid to take a look at what you're charging per hour mm -hmm. and make adjustments. When I was working in the dealership world, okay, we had, as a Ford dealership, yeah, I know you have all those jokes, found on the road, dead, and all that stuff. But anyway, it made me <laughs> a lot of money. But anyway, uh, the point that I'm making is once a year, we were contacted by Ford, and we had to call around to all the other dealerships in the area and see what their labor rates were. Sure. Why? Because Ford was going to pay us based on that when we did warranty work. 
Well, maybe you should do something like that. You should go around to your neighbors, your other shops around here, and take a look and see what they're charging and see in a whole, as a whole how much everybody's charging. And are you on the low side of that, in the middle or the high side? Mm -hmm. And then I think from there, you can make a good decision. A lot of customers don't mind, and I'm one of them, I don't mind paying the extra dollar, dollars for good service. Sure. I'd rather go into a place, pay extra up front, not to have to be towed back and pay more later. Yeah, especially when it comes to vehicles. Vehicles are no cheap purchase for people. This is something that you put a lot of trust in and mm -hmm. a lot of you know time and a, no pun intended, a lot of miles into. So you want to make sure that the work you're not being brushed through and just put back out on the road for the chance that something you know dangerous could happen mm -hmm. to you while driving. And the, and that all comes from the efficiency of your shop. Mm -hmm. That all comes from your labor rate. And then what work you get your customers to do. And again, building trust with your customers yet the other thing, because if you're beating them over the head and maybe selling services that are a little questionable, then that might be something that you have to think about. Sure. And of course, they're all profit makers. But the thing is, is profit can be made honestly. Mm -hmm. And um, so my thing is, is if you build layer of trust, and this is that recurring thing that I keep saying, trust with the customer, customer trusting you, that's where it's all going to come in, mm -hmm. all right? And when you do that, you're going to be able to sell more naturally. Sure. And some customers might actually say, you know what? You said next visit I should have this. Let's do it on this visit instead. Absolutely. And you know what, JB? I really love what you said is doing that competitive research in mm -hmm. your area. And there's a lot of different factors that are going to go into it, but specifically where you're located does have a big impact on what those labor rates will be. So if any of you are brave enough, let us know what your labor, labor rates look like in your area. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. It's Wednesday. Sorry. It's the middle of the week. We're all jumbled. And we're about to freeze. <laughs> and we are about to freeze. But if any of you are brave enough, Brave enough, let us know Sorry. what some of your label, labor <laughs> rates. <laughs> this is live, folks. Uh, let us know what some of your labor rates are you within your area. It's always interesting to see how they change throughout the country mm -hmm. and, you know, even throughout your neighborhood. I think that's really important because, you know, again, you're all in this together. And if you're way wacky, high or way low, or you're mm -hmm. cheating yourself if you're way low, if you're way high, you might want to consider all those things that make you charge that much. Sure. But sure. again, I think that if you deliver a great product, service with a smile and finished and done right the first time, I think that you can charge a reasonably good labor rate. Absolutely. I'm going to throw something else in here. Poor. Sure. The inspections that a lot of you do are free. Here's something that you may want to consider. And this, again, will increase and help your labor rate. Build the ultimate top to bottom, front to rear, left to right inspection, the overall baseline inspection, and sell it to a customer. There you go. And check this out. You sell that one to the customer, $39.99, whatever, whatever your market suggests and whatever your market will hold. By the way, after we do this inspection, we now have something to go back and look. So when you come in for your next inspection, which is free, we can look back and see how your brakes and tires and things of like that have changed. So there is a way of boosting your labor because you're going to make them commit to such a thing. And that's, it's not a lot, but it may make a difference because now they, you got something to work with from a previous visit. Absolutely. It's all about building that history, building that trust, um, and being able to do the work that's needed on the car. Definitely. So, all right. Well, I think that's enough for today. We're going to be back again next week talking another area that you can increase profit margin. We started to touch on it today, but we'll give you a little bit more information on it later. Um, but in the meantime, make sure you check us out on the road. We have a lot of big events coming up. Like we said, we're going to be at Bolton University down in Orlando, Florida. Mm -hmm. Um, later on next month, as well as Vision. So if any of you are going, let us know. Come visit us. We want to see all of our customers and friends out there. Um, but until next time. Yeah, and quite seriously, Vision's really a good place to go. You'll learn a lot. <laughs> all right. Take care, everyone. Stay warm. Hello.